I just realized I don't think there's a test or a decision uh, tree for how to know if you're a an invest more of an investor or more of a collector. Uh, thanks sponsors, Tops Panini, Upper Deck. I think all of the sponsors promote uh, investing and collecting in cards. Some some more than others, but uh, there's also Heritage Auctions, Hugs and Scott Auctions, Mike Stadium Sports Cards, Burbank Sports Cards, uh, Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication, uh, Beckett Marketplace, as well as ComC.com. So how would you know whether you're a collector? I don't know if you even... If you care, but the people around you may care and they may be misclassifying you and you may be uncomfortable with that, that you think you're just a collector, but people think you're an investor or vice versa. So on the buying side, uh, if you, whether you're a collector or an investor or any blend or hybrid, everybody tries to buy cards, right? I mean, you want, you want to get a good deal on the card. However, if you're a collector, it's less so. If you're a collector, you, you'd like to buy right, but if you see a card you need and it's for your personal collection, it's on your want list, it's your favorite player, whatever, um, you're probably going to pull the trigger on that, uh, even though as an, it, it makes it not as, as, uh, as, as good of an investment because you bought it for a little bit more, but now you have it. So it's hard to tell whether you're a collector or investor on the buy side, but that would be one uh, small indication there. On the sell side, it's, it's a lot easier to me. Uh, the flip answer, he might just say that if you're a collector, you simply don't sell. You never sell. Again, I don't believe that's necessarily true. Now, perhaps if you're a pure collector, the purest of pure collectors that only buys cards and never sells, well, then it'd be hard to make a case that you're also investing when you never sell. Uh, well, let's say the collector and the investor. There's two different people. One considers themselves a collector and one considers themselves an investor. And they both buy the same card at the same time for a good price. So they both bought uh, a card that's a really good card. They both could love the card and cherish the card and show off the card. And both of them might say, you know, this is great. I'm glad I bought this card. I really love this card. But, you know, if the card were to double or triple in price, uh, I'd sell it then. I'd sell it. And the collector could say that. The investor definitely would say that. Most disciplined, uh, many disciplined investors have a target price that if the card reaches this price, I think I'll, I'll be selling. And that's actually been recommended by other podcasters. And it's, it's not bad advice. Okay. But here's where you find out if you're a collector. The collector does not follow his or her, her own advice in this, in this matter. If, if this collector and this investor both bought a Luca uh, Doncic card or a Zion Williamson card, and that card, you know, over the next couple of years, say, uh, tripled in price. The collector doesn't sell. The collector says, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's tripled in price. The investor says, tripled in price. I'm taking the, taking the profit. I'm selling and I'm going to reinvest in something else and ride that up. The collector says, you know, uh, Luca or Zion, whoever it is, it could be anybody, but maybe it tripled in price because they won an MVP which is not out of the question if you're an optimistic fan of one of those uh, outstanding uh, 20-year-old young players. And at that point, they're 22. And so they've already got an MVP. And the thought might be that, well, they've already tripled in price, but they could do it again. What if they line up a string of MVPs? Then I'll feel stupid that I sold out at only triple. Again, the investor says, hey, I'm taking the profit and I'm going to, I'm going to re, uh, and reinvest it. The collector says, you know what? I really love this card. I'm actually a collector of Luca more than an investor. The pride of and, and the enjoyment of owning the card, even though I know it's, it's a tripled in value, I don't want to sell it because I want the card. In fact, if I sold it and then tried to buy it back, uh, again, uh, for a flash in the pan, you know, you, you might think the price would have ebb and flow. For an enduring star, which those guys might be if they've strung two or three or four good years together, then you think, well, th- these guys might be you know, perennial all-stars. And so why would I want to sell? So that's it. If you have trouble, uh, everybody likes to buy things they like and have things they like. The question comes to when and if you sell something, that's when you know you're an investor as opposed to a collector. That makes me, I think, uh, I think I'm probably collector slash investor. I think my main interest is collecting. The investing is very secondary. I'm not saying I don't like to make money. I certainly did when I was a dealer back in the seventies, but uh, now it's just, you know, it's nice to have some cards that I like and I like, uh, but I don't mind selling some of them, especially I don't need all the cards I've got. So enough rambling about uh, investment, uh, investor versus collector. Have fun. There's no right answer to that question. It just might be helpful when you're telling your friends what you are. Thanks. See you again tomorrow.